side of us. You could, you could kind of see the thing moving through the woods. Uh, all I can remember is flipping the light on, and I see this creature, and I knew, I knew in my heart, I knew in my mind, in the whole night, this isn't a man. And then this thing walks across the road, takes a turn towards us, and then leaps over a guardrail. Went to look forward, and there was a big black face. Squatch DTV, exploring the Bigfoot mystery each week with your hosts, veteran researcher, author, and TV personality, the Squatch Detective, Steve Culls, and from the Bigfoot Research Project of Kentucky, Chris Bennett. Sit back and buckle up as we bring you guests from around North America discussing the Bigfoot phenomena, but not without a few laughs, too. Here are your host, Steve and Chris. And good evening, cyberspace. Welcome to Squatch D TV for today's date, November 13th, 2022. I'm your host, your guide, the Squatch Detective, Steve Coles, along with, well, the man with the plan, Mr. Chris Bennett. Hello, Chris. Steve, it's good to see you, bud. Man, I, I know we've had the uh, fall weather hit here in Kentucky. We already have the heaters going now. I guess yeah. you guys are probably getting pretty cool up there by now. Uh, well, it was a couple of really well. The tropical storm warmed it up quite a bit. We oh, were, yeah. we had like uh, actually we had a day that hit seventy two. Um, yeah. Uh, so we had a couple of days, but we had some rain to go with that, and um, now it's uh, high of uh, forty seven today and going to. 25 tonight so uh yeah Yeah, last week it was really nice you know and then this week it's been kind of drag out the light jacket you know anyway i'll be seeing some of the white stuff i'm sure pretty soon oh yeah yeah um, i think uh one of the guys that uh, made a comment on one of my videos that said they got snow and i think he's in missouri they already got some snow so (laughs) too early for that and you know where that's going next I guess. That's Me. your way, yeah. Yep. Uh, so that's not a, a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, um, we have a hell of a show lined up for you tonight. Um, I can't wait to talk. We're you know get into this, but what do we do first? We do our roll call. We'll say hi to all our oh yeah great audience here coming in, and let's oh, see yeah. first in today who set, who turned oh. on the light and turned on the heaters. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mick is in the house. Uh, low rider. Good to see you, Mick. Learn Mark, uh, Grasshopper, Sandra Grasshopper. Piper, Timmy Boy, Mr. Lee Three PO, sir. Welcome back. Um, Uncle Bones too. Hello, Uncle Bones. Uncle Bones. Uh, Am and Chris. Uncle Greetings, Chris. mortals. Um, oh. Joe Dryden. Welcome, welcome. Joe. Uh, Prairie Fire. Hey, Prairie Fire. It's good to see Prairie you back. Fire. Yeah. Uh, Don Fuller. Of course, Don's lurking. Finding the trackway. Hello, hello. Um, 
Oh, Leon, Bigfoot Okanagan is in the Leon. house. Hello, good Leon. You, Leon. And uh, good to see you up and around uh, yeah. using some. Good to see my eyes back again. Hello, hello. My eyes. Jen, welcome. Hey, Jen. Uh, welcome. Sharky, Sharky's in the house. I, I like his. I like his icon for his his uh, YouTube icon. <laughs> it's a shark fin. <laughs> um, and uh, oh, of course, Jay Bachochin in the house. Hello, Jay. Okay. Good to see you, man. And uh, let's see who else we got. Uh, Joe. Joe's in the house. Joe hey, Snyder. Joe. Hello, Joe. Yeah, I didn't talk to him this week. I gotta, I gotta holler at him. Um, been a busy week for me at work. Whoa. Uh, see who else we got. The tall ones. Brent's in the house. Hello, Brent. Uh, wow. Uh, a lot of people came in to that tonight. Yeah. So. And glad to see everybody. Uh, yep. Patrick Barron in the house. Patrick. Well, Pat. well. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Um. So here we are. Um, yeah. Um, today aired my uh, my episode on the Bigfoot Influencers podcast. So I was mm-hmm. on that today. So had a great in- interview with Jim Halloran talking about hoaxers and the psychology behind hoaxers. And yeah. uh, probably we're planning to do a future episode. We're going to talk more about uh, you know primate behavior and yeah. uh, relate and its relation to. Uh, Sasquatch behavior. So, up oh, Brian and Chewy go hiking. Snuck in too. <laughs> hey Brian, good to see you, man. Jay Fritz, he's in as well. Okay. So yeah, it's good to see everybody. Um. So tonight, tonight is going to be a very interesting night. Um. Every once in a while, I like like to do this. We did this a little bit with the John Green episode, mm. uh, where we took an episode that I believe was from. January of 2007. Well, this one, I think this one is probably maybe the fourth or sixth episode of Squatch Detective Radio. Yeah. So this goes back to 2006. Six. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, uh, oh, Raptor Crazy is, is in. And he said he watched the show and it was pretty good. Raptor. <laughs> Michael Haywood's in the anybody, house too. Yeah, if we missed anybody, sorry. We won't say hello to everybody. You know, we don't aim to, but there's a lot of lot of uh activity over in the chat. Always is. Always um, love everybody. Glad to see you. So this was the old days of Blog Talk. Um yeah. mind you when Blog Talk was created, it was created in August of two thousand six. Yeah, I became yeah. a host in September of 2006. Yeah. I was the first Bigfoot show on Blog Talk Radio. Yeah. Um, and then I got... Wasn't, uh, uh, wasn't difficult to find a Bigfoot show. You was the only one. Yeah. Switch over well, that. at the time, and then uh, I had talked with Sean Forker and got yeah. Sean up. So he, he aired his show a week after mine. Yeah. Um, So we're like the two oldest podcasters of course yeah. his show was the sasquatch experience which he still periodically does and i think he's yeah. still doing it now with uh jay baker uh but the original sasquatch experience had it was uh sean and henry may yeah yep um so this is probably i want to say this is probably october november of 2006 um mm-hmm. and uh i i cut out all the front end stuff uh, because we didn't have copyright issues with blog talk radio. So I wanted to get the music off in case I had something on there that, um, yeah, better safe than sorry. Was not YouTube friendly. And, uh, it's gonna, when we start this up and what we're going to do is we're going to play that episode, uh, well, a good chunk of it. We're going to leave off the end the beginning and the ending with music and all that stuff. And, um, uh, you know, where we go into pro at the end of the show, we used to do, um, the intro, uh, in the beginning and at the end, we used to do show notes and program notes. We're going to leave that part out, uh, for the sake of sanity. <laughs> um, I, I know that in this episode, I did mention that we had John Green scheduled. So, yeah. um, yeah, which is kind of cool. Is, this is prior to me co-hosting with you too. I remember listening to the show, yeah. but I wasn't co-host back then. Yeah. This is like four years prior to you co-hosting yeah, the show. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and this is, this is pre Billy Willard days. 
you know, people who who uh, who've listened to this show, we've had um, a total of uh, four co-hosts. We had, uh, you know, Mean Mark, uh, who was the first co-host. Well, actually, no, Big G was the first co-host, and then he Big bowed G. out. Yeah. He bowed out after a few weeks, and then I, I picked up, you know, Mark, uh, Mark, uh, Liam Bruno, and uh, Mark was there for, uh, you know, uh, a while. Yeah. Um, then we picked up uh, Billy Willard, and yeah. Billy Willard was with us for about a year and a half, almost two years. And then yeah. we had some interim uh, co hosts. Indy used to uh, be one of the interim co hosts. Yeah, Andy. Uh, yeah. Good old Steve Pickett. God rest his soul. He's a good one. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, boom, uh, here comes Chris Bennett. And I think <laughs> at some point we will be doing the um, the Bob Schmalz back Java Bob episode. <laughs> and this is just before Chris became the co-host of the show. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, Big G was co-hosting that one. I was going through my archives today because I do have a, a quite an extensive uh, list of archives of yeah. Squatch D, the old, old school, when, you know. On the old school, the pre uh, from 2006 to 2008, there's some. I think I have some like 65 episodes that I saved. Yeah. Of um, you know people like Stan Courtney, DB Donlin. Uh, yeah. Uh, you the know. good ones. Yeah, we need to bring those over to YouTube yeah. because I mean, who yeah. goes to Blog Talk Radio now? Not not me. I mean, I I don't know. I I don't know how well they're doing. They they seem to be doing okay, uh, but. You know, and and Blog Talk was a great, great forum for for many, many years. For the time. Uh, For the time. (laughs) Um, So when you hear this episode tonight, um, and that's why I want to set this up, is when you hear this episode tonight, and we'll be pausing it and commenting it as we listen to it. We're not going to be muted tonight. We're doing this a little bit differently than normal. Usually we'll play an entire video and just let it run. Well, usually we do that for the two or three minute videos or the five minute videos and um, we let it play and we discuss it afterwards. But we're going to be discussing this in pieces here tonight. And, uh, you know, you know, back then um, the the technology was, um, believe it or not, uh, that show, uh, I I would call in a call in number, which is the host line, and I'd have a Bluetooth earpiece in. And do the show over the Bluetooth. So my hands were free to deal with the chat and, you know, look up things if I needed to. And, uh, you know, now it's just completely, they've brought a whole new level of professionalism here with, with StreamYard where we can do a show, run video. It makes a live show a lot of fun. And, yeah. you know, uh, there are some people that don't like doing a live show. I love live. Um, yeah. Uh, because the interaction with my audience, right. our audience is essential. Yeah. Um, I, I think it establishes that connection between us and the audience, and uh, it's it's awesome. I I have loved this format. I fell in love with it when we start. We could show a video, and yep. everybody could watch it with us at the same time. We could, and the everybody in the chat could comment on it. Now, I I just love that. Yep. Uh, you know, so you, you can really uh, like here's the. Here's a picture of that track cast. To let everybody see what we're looking at. Yep. Awesome. I fell in love with it. <laughs> yep. And for, folk, and for the folks strolling in late, we haven't really started the, um, uh, we start to, uh, uh, we haven't started the video, the audio yet, because the audio runs about, uh, it's going to run about 53 minutes, but we'll be stopping and talking. And, and yeah. uh, Nick, Nikki, hello, Nikki. Good Nikki. to see you. Yeah, you know, live. There's nothing that beats live. Yeah, and keeping up with the chat can be hard if you have an agenda. That's why. Um, that's why. And you know, when I went to Blog Talk, I automatically established that co-host role. You know, there were shows that weren't doing that. You know, uh, you know. I guess there was a show with M.K. Davis, and I think what's his name, Don. Um, can't think of his name off the top of my head, but. There used to be a show called Monster Central that was a audio podcast, very early day. It ran, it ran for a few years, and it was MK Davis and another gentleman. But it wasn't a. I don't believe it was a live format or anything like that. I'm not sure. It's that old, and I see Nikki is stuck in caps lock. <laughs> um, 
and it wasn't a live format show, I believe. But but anyway, this is the uh, longest running podcast on the on Bigfoot there is, and uh, uh, we've always kind of tried to run it like uh, I mean, in the blog talk days it was always guest, 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 guest. Now we kind of yeah. With this new format and everything, we can run kind of a variety show. Some days we have guests, some days we do analysis, some days we'll yeah. go down memory lane and, and discuss it today. Yeah, it, um, it's cool to have the option to show people something that yeah. we can talk about what we're looking at. It's Yep. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, get into our topic tonight, and that is the original bad boy of Bigfoot, Mr. Eric Beckshirt. And for those who don't remember him... Um, he was a firebrand, um, super intelligent guy. Right? He was a member of um, Mensa. Yeah. He was a uh, he was had a genius IQ. He had a, a I don't know I think he had a, he had a master's degree from Berkeley. Super intelligent guy, but yeah. off the friggin' rails. He was into everything, and he had a conspiracy theory on anything. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, very and, entertaining. Yeah. And he never, he never had not had, he never in, did not have a lack of an opinion. Right. He was super opinionated. And, um, you know, he had run ins with a lot of people and he's been, he was banned in a lot of forums because he was your first, really, he was the first internet troll. Yeah. You know, and we also have to remember and, and not be remiss that, you know, alternative views of Sasquatch um, were viewed even, you know, more deftly uh, back then. You know, they were uh, they were dealt with more deftly, I should say. Well, yeah, what we may consider woo now, he uh, he was he would consider serious research material worthy of looking really into. Well, a lot of people great, say you know. yeah, a lot of people say that Kawani, uh, James Kawani Lapsaritis was kind of like the father of Wu and the mind speak Bigfoot and all that. Yeah. But I, I, I would go one step further and, and say that that Beckford probably Eric Beckford probably was the real father of it. He was yes. the one who had the loudest voice. Yep. He was the one who who shook the tree. He was the one who started issues with everybody. And um yeah, I, I would get, you know, for some reason, I, I reached out to him. I said, okay, I, you know me. I'm a chopsy kind of guy sometimes. And uh, that's why Chris is laughing. And yeah. yeah, you wouldn't believe the pains that I had just to get the hour of this radio show in. Uh, because he would call me and, you know, even afterwards, oh, did you hear about this? Did you see about that? There was one very interesting thing, and I think he'll talk about it during the show, if my memory serves me correct, was he does mention uh, the hunt, uh, uh, the book, The Hunt at the Skinwalker, Hunt for the Skinwalker, um, right. the book about, uh, with, by, written by uh, Dr. Cole Meany, um, that, that kind of inspired, you know, all the stuff you see about Skinwalker Ranch, and it had a lot of uh, stuff about the first program, NIDS, and uh, he does mention that. Um, but, you know, in the context of Bigfoot, uh, I thought he was kind of off base about that. So. Did you think it'd be okay if I'd, I mentioned about his, that, uh, that his blog is still available? Yes, Eric, go right ahead. You know, yep. If anybody wants to read up on Eric Beckford had a, a really great blog and it has a lot of different things on there. And it is still available. It's a. Uh, vectoredblog.wordpress.com uh, and that that name i know it's it's difficult for me it was difficult it's about b e c k j o r d vectored blog yep, just like you see in the uh yeah. the graphic up there but for our, a, yeah. that's a, that's an example of the, the kind of thinking that uh uh really great guy uh, you know, and the, the blog is, is entertaining and it, it could be anything. I mean, you know, one entry may be UFOs. The next m- might be talking about uh, Bigfoot or, or uh, the Clintons, you know, any, anything. Uh, he just, he was not never short of an opinion. God no. rest his soul. No, he was not. He had an opinion on everything and uh, actually was probably the only Bigfoot researcher that I know of 
um, that made it on Letterman. Yeah. And that's the the graphic there. And he was nutty as a fruitcake on Letterman, too. But um, God rest his soul, I say that in jest, that he did us no favors. Let's Let's all put that out there. He did us no favors, but he was... Very entertaining, and it, it's very interesting to hear. Yes, because you think people like, you know, like some of the the people we've seen nowadays are bad. This guy, understand, this guy had the latching of the media of the day. Yeah, you know the yeah, we're internet. Not going to speak uh, unfavorably no. of the dead. We're just going to tell it like it was. He was a character. Yep, and uh, you had to. If you didn't know it uh, about him or know him to appreciate him, you wouldn't understand him. Yep. And you know, you know what? I'm I'm sure he did a lot of people wrong. Yeah. And you know, and that's unfortunate. But I really, you know, he never did me wrong, so I can't really speak badly of him. Right. Um. It was interesting talking to him. He had some some. Hang on one second. Yeah. He had some brilliant insight on certain things. He did. Um, but was way off base on this mystery sometimes. But we'll let you guys judge for yourself. Let's get into the, uh, yeah, he believed in interdimensional Bigfoot. Um, and, uh, well, let's get into some of the audio. And I think it starts off with uh, me uh, talking to folks about, um, you know, let's be respectful because at this time, um, and I wish we, 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 you know, that's why we did, you know, we did a show like that where we put the the, the, the back door to the, the studio in the chat that one time. Yeah. Um, that was the first live show that we had interaction in a long time. But at Blog Talk, we had call-in lines. Yeah. And, uh, we, we you know, someday I'll, I'll, I'll come up with my compilation of bloopers and bleepers we had from those call-in lines because oh, yeah. I do have that. But, we um, get some good calls sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Those were the yeah. days. Yep, yeah, uh, Roger Bowl says I remember the comedy gold of Mary Green and, and the Fox stories. Yep, uh, you know uh, Mary Green was, and uh, you know she's passed away too, unfortunately. And I say that because, yeah, she did us no favors either, as far as you know, serious Bigfoot research. But, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I I hold no bear. You know, I don't have hold hatred for anybody really. This is I don't take a lot of things personally. Right. Um, uh, but yeah, some photos I think on the Carter uh, farm down there too. I looked at it, it was supposed to be proof of Bigfoot, and I looked at them. I was like, Blob Squatch. I see trees. I, I, I don't I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know that Mary was the the. I think the creator of the Blob Squatch, <laughs> but maybe, yeah. But um, but anyway, let's get into this and let's give yeah. it a listen and let's have some fun tonight, Eric. I am uh, giggling with glee and rocking with anticipation. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, as usual, I always start off our guests with with the, the famous question: How in the world did you get started? Ah, good to see somebody. Why you hoaxing UFOs? Uh, too much talk is damaging the subject of UFOs, too. Well, I agree. And you know what? Uh, why you hoaxing UFOs? I would love you to shoot me an email uh, because, you know, I do a lot of debunking with Bigfoot. And I'd like to do a collab. That would be kind of neat. You know, we'll do a collab on a UFO and we can do a collab on a Bigfoot. That would be awesome. Started in this business. Well, everything else is boring. <laughs> and it, this has not been boring. It, it may have been depriving, it may have been poverty-stricken, it may have been unpleasant and unweird, but it has not been boring. You're going to hear me take pauses, too, because I'm trying to absorb what he's so, trying uh, to say. And sometimes it was just laughing. a little bit about what you feel the Bigfoot creature is and, and, and some of the... the and I jump right into it. The evidence is that you've discovered it. I know you've been at this for 30 plus years yourself. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm curious to hear the evidence you have and present it to our listeners tonight. So uh, I'll give you the floor. 
Well, um, I've been on I've been at this for 11 years on the internet since 1995, and uh, I guess 20 more years before that, before the internet seemed to exist uh, as as we know it today. Uh, in fact, I remember the good old days when you could call somebody up on the phone, and uh, and they wouldn't freak out, you know, or they they would just say, "Oh my God, you're invading my privacy." You know, by calling them up and talking to them. Whereas today, if you get somebody's phone somehow, and you call them, they say, "How did you get my phone? What are you going to do to me now? Are you going to kill me? Are you going to track down my house and burn it down?" All and isn't stuff. that true I mean, now? The good old days when researchers uh, I mean, talked I mean, to each other on the telephone, true. and they even sometimes on there. went to each other's houses and knocked on the door. Amazing. Yeah. Huh. Today, of course, we have rampant paranoia, and we have a lot of um, I don't know, afraid little people that are hiding on the Internet. And I'm here to liberate them all with new ideas, new concepts, and the. And I'm here to announce the end of F and B. Yeah, that, that didn't work out too well for them. <laughs> You're to liberate everybody. I, I would assume that means uh, flesh and blood. Right, flesh and blood as as we used to know it as it was widely assumed to be. Uh, that is now over, and um, uh, you are now liberated. Uh, you may oh, now think in new ways. And, uh, welcome to the, the show. For this, um, is a book. this interview it's took place in 2006, uh, roughly. Now, if you call yourself leave November. out there, if you call yourself a Bigfoot researcher, don't you dare open your mouth to anyone until you have read this book. If you haven't read the book, then you don't belong in this field. This is the best. It beats out all of the other books. Um, it that makes Tom Powell look like kindergarten. It makes uh, um, quite a few other books look very, very backward. Um, all the books written back in the 70s uh, are just um, totally outdated. It's called Hunt for the Skinwalker by Dr. Holm, Kelleher, and um, oh, yeah, that's what I mean. <clears throat> it is available through Amazon.com. Also, George Knapp, a, a TV producer in Vegas, is a co-author of it. So if you haven't got this book, um, hide your head in shame and get on Amazon and get it for 8 bucks, $8, and read it. It is, it is changing everything. And uh, we, we, we basically, give us some of the premise of that book for because there's a lot of readers out there that that aren't, or rather, listeners out there that aren't necessarily Bigfoot researchers as well. So maybe you want to uh, hit the premise of that a little bit. Um, Dr. Kelleher uh, was uh, until 19 until 2004. He was a member uh, and on staff of a group called NIDS, the National Institute for Discovery Science, which was uh, run by a multimillionaire in Vegas uh, designed to investigate paranormal situations of all kinds. And they, um, they zeroed in, among other things, they had many targets, and one of those that they zeroed in on was a was a what you call a hot spot in uh, Utah. He did uh, in the Books Unitist from the 60s Mountains. And, the 70s, all those and were just, uh, uh, talked about the old. Uh, it was a ranch. They called it the Gorman yeah. Ranch because it was owned previously by a fellow named Gorman. One of them said the same thing, basically. And um, this Mr. Gorman was reporting all kinds of very weird things happening on his ranch. There were um, UFOs five miles wide. Now there Gorman were UFOs only one mile wide. Gorman there was were UFOs the a lot um, smaller than that. There were blobs, there were orbs being used for the Shermans. There were dark masses and trees that would uh, t t have telepathy with you. There were cattle mutilations. There was Bigfoot. There was giant hyenas that couldn't be killed. Um, and Maybe laughing hyenas. All mm. kinds of strange trickster-like events happening to the people there. They're being 
as if some child was playing with them. All this was going on for Mr. Gorman and his family, and the uh, people at NIDS found out about it. And back in the, uh, uh, I think it was 97, 98, in that time zone, um, they bought the ranch so that they could have unlimited access to it. And then they hired Mr. Gorman to come back and be the foreman to take care of the cattle. Um, make a long story short, all these events started to happen to the, to the scientists from NIDS on the ranch. That it happened to Gorman, although maybe not quite as much, not quite as often, but it happened still a great deal. And they... Um, still a TV show on about that. Yeah, well, there's a lot of interesting comments right now yeah. coming through. Um, Nids grift. Um, <coughs> I don't think Nids really had much of a grift. They were pretty quiet for the longest time. <coughs> the advantage here is that if they happen to some people who have the words PhD behind their name, which in science makes it big, big, big. Uh, yeah, Em and Chris said he bought the uh, immortal animal as a wolf. I agree. I thought it was a wolf, too. That's what uh, Sher the Sherman's reporting on there was this wolf that couldn't be killed. Difference. If it's just you and I, unfortunately, we are treated very badly by other scientists because they figure that we don't count. That's the way it goes. Um, you have to be Dr. So-and-so before they'll even open your mail. <laughs> and... Um, well, it did happen to Dr. Kelleher and several of his colleagues, these, uh, these events, and it's all in the book, The Hunt for the Skinwalker. And he suggests in the, toward the end of the book that uh, because of the variety of things here happening, um, most of which could not be proven with physical evidence, uh, they got even very bad pictures, not very good pictures either, um, they came to the theory that, that uh, fits in with many of the modern theoretical physicists about cosmology, you know, the science of the universe, how it came to be, uh, to deal with um, parallel worlds and parallel universe theories. Now, these theories say that we have universes out there stacked up like a pancake stack. <clears throat> um, or like the floors of a giant skyscraper. And they go up forever. And down forever. Now, mind you, and this stuff each is one of these parallel universes kind of dry right now, but eventually it, it'll pick up. It varies from the one before. And that things from these are able to come to our universe. All this started with theories by Einstein. And then the uh, other... Other professors, like Dr. Michio Kaku, Dr. Fred Allen Wolf, and about uh, six or eight others uh, have pushed this even further. And the idea and is that why, why, for instance... Um, now, that was the other running joke there, Chris, was after the show aired, we could hear the ice cubes clinking on the glass. Yeah. yeah. And we were trying to figure, is he drinking? I mean, he could have been drinking a, you know, a soda with cubes it, in it. It could have been. But it also could have been a highball. <laughs> it could have been, yeah. Are there different kinds of Bigfoot? It isn't because one lives in Florida and the other lives in Washington State. It isn't like that. It's why are these are there differences even within the states? You know, some are shaped one way and some are shaped another. Some are, have this kind of a head, some have that kind of a head. And some have this kind of behavior, and others have the other kind of behavior. You know what? Uh, Steve made a great comment there. Mmm, pancake universe. Does that come with syrup? <laughs> well, Why is this? Well, the answer is possibly that they may come here from different worlds or parallel universes from each other. 
So you could have a type A Bigfoot walking around in the woods on the east side of the property, and you could have a type B Bigfoot walking around on the other side of the property because they come from different places to start with. Why are some of them wearing clothes or partly closed and others never? Um, why are some aggressive and why are some not? Why can some of them talk to you in your head and others cannot or don't? Why are these differences? Well, the differences, again, is because they may be coming from different universes when they get here. And they don't necessarily relate to each other. Um, so anyway, this is, a, this is a Dr. Kelleher puts out this idea. He puts out an awful lot of it. Uh, Steve just asked, uh, curious script, they asked, is there a waffle universe? <laughs> Only in Belgium. Yeah. Yeah. Information about how hard it is to advance new ideas in science, particularly um, to challenge the dominant way of thinking or paradigm. Oh, oh don't worry, what Steve. I'll, to people who try there's and a do comment this. in here. I, I, if I read the comment, that, that was pretty him. funny. Um, if, it's a, if you're not a PhD and you're just a, a more or less regular guy, you, have, you get even stomped on even harder, as I ought to know. <laughs> Do we have any questions so far? Well, you know, he, he does, like I said, there is some sanity to his insanity. Yeah, yeah. You know, like like the whole talking about, well, if you're not a PhD, you're going to get stomped down. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, Very true. If your ideas are crazy and unfounded, you're, you're probably going to get yeah, stomped down. It too. don't matter yet whether you got the PhD or not. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I, I do have some, some, some things that, that may answer those on the flesh and blood side. And, and, and what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to – I'll let you continue on in your dissertation because I really want you to continue on, on in the – because I, I feel a lot of times that, you know, in this field we interrupt each other too much before we get our full story out. As we, you know, we've, we've seen a, a researcher as of late taking a particular beating because – and the full story isn't out. So I'll just let uh, – uh, honestly, what I, researcher? Where? What are you talking about? Explain. Uh, I don't. I, oh, you see, he wanted the dirt. <laughs> I, I have promised myself I am getting beyond that topic. <laughs> and uh, are you that? Are you that researcher? Nope, not at all. Well, who is he, and what happened to him? Well, I. Well, I think we have a little time here. <laughs> well, we do. We absolutely do. So, what happened to him? What well, did he do? Well, he released. He wants the dirt so bad. Mm. And of course, I'm I'm a rookie interviewer here. <laughs> it's a uh, statement on the Patterson film. And oh, you mean MK? Yep. And before he could get his story completely out, well, you you know the massacre theory. Yeah. Well, sorry, you've been there. Uh, it's not like our, our audience. He, he doesn't. Know. And and you want to know the funny thing was is that that whole thing came out a couple of months after I had him on the show. Yeah. The very first show we did, he was the very first guest. He was mum on the entire topic. Yeah. He never mentioned once the massacre. And then all of a sudden, a couple of months later, get his whole story out. He keeps the story half hidden. That's the problem with him. Well, I talked to him personally on the telephone. That's not just email. I talked to him on the phone, and I, I cannot get the man to come out with all of it. Well, you know, he's due, always due hiding time. something. In due time, I guess. That's, that's what he keeps saying, but he doesn't give any reason <laughs> for why it should be due time. You know, uh, he's saying there's a stick being held by Bigfoot in the movie. Well, I'm I am the foremost analyst of the movie, not him. I've been doing it for 24 years, <laughs> and I haven't found any stick anywhere. Now, I said to him, "All right, I've got the same movie you do. In fact, I've got a better movie than you do. Where is the stick?" Okay, let us quantify that statement. Yeah, Eric Bechard had one of the original Patterson films. He did have one of the original Patterson films. So he's not lying here. Yeah. He probably has analyzed it, analyzed it more at that point in time yeah. than MK did. Right. And he has a better copy of it, and that is probably the truth. Yeah. So I think MK was working with a second or third generation copy Right. Actually, was working with one of the first gen. Yeah. So. He won't tell me. I'm hearing that it's supposed to be just before you 
go over the log pile or something. Okay. And you know, we we all thought, and uh, let me add one more note into that: that we all thought that, you know, Becher was lying about that. And then after his death, it came out he wasn't lying about that. He actually did have a first gen copy. Okay, but um, it, it I haven't seen that so far. Uh, but he no, won't I, explain. I, he won't send me copies of, of this of the shots he's talking about. Well, I, I'm sure it yeah. has a lot to do with the, with the book release that's come upcoming, and uh, there there is some some media. I mean, he what book is a, this? There's there's a movie involved. That's actually, the book. that's that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. Movie involved. I mean, that's how much oh. I far removed myself from from the particular situation. But but he he yeah. denies this. He denies that. I said, look, is it because of this movie, and are you are you involved with this producer who's putting together this movie, and he's showing going to show this stuff, and is it that's why you're holding back? And he says, no, 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 no. Well, well then I say, what's the reason? He doesn't answer that. Well, he's, know, he's gotten he, to be super mysterious. Well, perhaps he has his reasons, but you know, let me. Well, let maybe me, the uh, reasons aren't very good. Well, maybe, maybe the they are. Bad he just doesn't want to say it, so. Well, here, 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 we did no, the only one. The only one can answer that, really, Eric, is, is MK. And like I said, that's not a topic I really wanted to, to trust tonight. And uh, as a matter of fact, I did have a, a couple of questions, and kind of a point counterpoint, because as you know, the listeners on, on this show know that I'm pretty much a believer in the flesh and blood theory. And you know, like no I good said, reason. Huh? Well, you haven't got any good reasons for that. I certainly do, but I'll I'll, I'll Let's back hear it. I'm always later. Oh, hang on a second. Let's hear your reasons. Oh, very simple. Uh, something that's flesh and blood leaves tracks, do they not? Um, no. Sure they do. <laughs> no, no. Well, in, um, something in, that, that in, is in, 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 in 1856 in 1856 in England. Um, there was a little town outside of Leeds where um, the people woke up. There was a light snowfall, and they found like um, 3,500 tracks that were of cleft hooves, about four inches long, and they were going over fences. They were going up two fences and apparently going through the fence. They were going up to brick walls and going through the brick walls. They were going up on top of houses. They were going under rivers and creeks and coming up again. They were going up to trees and going right through the trees. That is not flesh and blood, but it did leave tracks. They call that the devil's footprints. And and you mind you, tell me that just because some somebody comes here, let's say you have a space time visitor or you have Dr. Spock or something land. Mind you that Eric uh, really did not. You know, somebody would tell him, "Oh, I, I, we, we got these tracks that you know." went through brick walls, you know, right. it, and he would believe him. Yeah. You know, there was no, is this person hoaxing me? Is this person right. bull, bullshitting no me? No of a hoax whatsoever. Right, yeah, yeah. none. He's got no um, 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 filter on that. The, uh, the critical thinking on that part is missing. Right, right. <laughs> and, and you'll find that a lot, you know, film analysts. Yeah. They get a Bigfoot film and they just want to analyze the film. You know, it, it's not, it's not that, it's not that two dimensional. You got to look at the whole, all the whole thing up, down, left, right. And he steps in the snow for a few steps and goes back. He might be flesh and blood where he comes from. Maybe we don't know, but we don't, but we do know that he's not normal on this planet. Yeah. But I, I guess what I'm saying is, is, is the, on theory, this, could possibly exist, of course. And on theory itself, a, uh, a you know a, a mouse can balance an elephant on its tail. You know, given the right particular formula, the right particular theory. What I'm saying is, is what evidence is there? I don't that accept that just because you say it. I don't accept that just because you're saying so. You're going to have to show, prove it to me. Well, I'm sure some physicists could prove that to you. Uh, I'm just. I'm not I'm, sure. I'm skeptical. Well, I'm skeptical too. <laughs> and, and but I'm still I'm still asking you, and I've but, been trying to nail you on this for years. Why is it that you say that just because somebody puts a footprint down, that means they have to be flesh and blood? For all you know, it can be an android robot. You, would you don't know it's flesh and blood. Well, you don't know that there's a heart beating in there. Android robot. Blood that would bleed. Oh, 
You don't know that. It's the law of nature. <laughs> the law of nature. No. It's, it's not a robot, Eric. We know that. My cousin has a... See, but you see, his argument is the flesh and blood. Well, just because somebody says it does. You yeah. know. Now, now, you see, he's applying his critical thinking to the opposite argument. Yeah. Not to his own. So there's a case, and in looking at this many years later, knowing what I know about psychology and stuff, in looking at this, uh, you can see a guy who is uh, has a lot of bias towards his own confirmation bias, towards his own philosophy. And we've seen that happen with some relatively intelligent people. Um, if they get overly intelligent, then they're, you know, they have no filter on their bias. Yeah. A, a robo-reptile. And he has it go along in the sand at the beach with a remote control, and that sucker leaves. Uh, Mr. Palazzo is a, <laughs> Mr. Palazzo is in the house. Tracks. You gonna tell me that's flesh and blood? Hell no. It's a robot. And then what about the hair? <laughs> what about the dermal ridges? What about the uh, the vocalizations? What about? I mean, these are all animal characteristics. How do you, wait, wait a minute. Wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. How do you know that any vocalization is coming from Bigfoot? Prove it. Have Prove you ever, has it. anyone ever seen Bigfoot opening its mouth and making a noise? Yes. No. Yes. Well, we don't uh, know that vocalizations specifically are from Bigfoot. We don't know that. We'd like to think so, but we don't know that for sure. Okay. Bigfoot does not stand in the middle of, of, of a clearing and start screaming so you can watch it. That has not happened. Uh, but what has happened is people hearing a vocalization turn around and see one. So there it is. Yeah. Sure, sure, that, that's entirely possible. I'm sure I can come up with a report somewhere where somebody has actually seen it vocalized. I don't fact, think you can. Well, and also, uh, you have to prove that report is true. Well, but... The one with the hoofs walking through the walls and the fences. Yeah. Yeah. How can you believe Now, you see, I, I'm trying to um, not really open up a very voracious debate with him on this show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to, you know. So that report is true. Well, show me a videotape. Show there me a videotape where this is happening. Show me a videotape. And you know what? See, uh, I was trying to be real nice, but I know my thought was, well, show me a videotape of this thing walking, leaving tra this hoof creature walking through walls. Yeah. Eric, uh, my whole point is, is very simply, very simply, is show me what report that you have can be uh, validated as well. But before we go on to that question, we have a caller from the 606 area code. And, uh, hey, like, see how I just slipped that one in? Yeah, show me that. Show me anything and, you can. And uh, area, uh, call us from the 606 area code. You're on the air. I have a sure question for Mr. Six Beckford. Six? Yes, That's go ahead. Yours, sir. Mr. Beckford, I was listening to you speak about the footprints in London. I had a question for you. If these creatures or people are moving through parallel universes and they can walk through walls in our time, how are they leaving footprints also in the snow or whatever? How are they leaving footprints in the snow? Yes, you said there were footprints that were going up to walls, walking through walls, and coming out the other side of walls. Well, first of all, I'm not going to tell you that the th thing that did it in 1858 is the same thing that did it in 2005. They, they did it at... Now, mind you, he just said 1858 when he said the original was 1856, but... Different who's places. But who's keeping score at this point? Yeah. It's too funny. It's in different times, and they may be different creatures or people. There's no guarantee that they're the same one. No, I understand that, but my the question is, if something that could walk through a wall, my mind tells me it would leave no footprints. Agree? No, I don't agree. Because, <laughs> the, first of all, and this is going to be very difficult and unpleasant for people to grasp, but when you're dealing with creatures from another parallel world or universe, there are no rules. There are no rules. There's no law. There's no rules. That is there's no crazy set of principles right that there. say you have to do this and you have to do that. Anything goes. You could have people come here that are painted zebra stripes. For all we know, you know, painted zebra stripes in natural skin. We could have the next day people come here that are painted blue. The day after that, you could have people come here that are walking on top of their head all day long. We don't know. There are no rules. 
Oh, also, we have reports, by the way, from UFO abductees where where aliens come through walls to get them. Do the aliens leave footprints? <laughs> um, I'm not aware, but I mean, I think Bigfoot's an alien and it leaves footprints. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Oh, that caller was right now. <laughs> Who was that? That, that was stupid. That do, is, uh, do the aliens leave uh, footprints? Tom from out in, uh, where was he from, Illinois? Something like that. He's Maybe he's from the 666 area code. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, you know, I know it's very frustrating. Help. It's very frustrating to people when I say things like this because it means that... Oh, Kaiju, this gets even better. You can't put your finger on it. You can't grasp it. You can't nail it down. But but that is the way it is. Anything goes in this game. Well, you, um, you got, you, you got, all I bets mean, are off. Pancake I mean, I, I understand the principle behind the theory. But if my point being is, is that you're so sure that this is not a flesh and blood creature Whereas it very well could be, couldn't it? No, not okay, anymore. And, and because now it? we have now we have a videotape. We have a videotape now by Brian Smith of Walla Walla, Washington, that shows tracks commencing out of nothing, and tracks later on ending in nothing. Okay, but but I go back to in the snow. Same in thing. snow, in snow, they are. <laughs> now this tracks. and this is the same thing that I have seen in my with my own eyeballs. In and as we all know, that if something leaves the track in snow, what happens? <laughs> Melts yeah. out, gets yeah. bigger, and it could have been a bird. Yeah. yeah well, you know, hopping. also, if somebody's hoaxing in snow, it would be really yeah. easy to walk out into a middle open field right in the center, put on your Bigfoot uh, footprint stompers backwards, and then step yeah. back on your same tracks you came in, you know, and... Leave the or, or Chris, you you could do that walking with boots, and sure. turn around and walk back out. And by the time the snow is done with it and the the melt, right, it's gonna look yeah. huge anyway. Yeah. Uh, anybody have yeah. ever seen my yeah. blog? I did a whole thing. You know, I stepped in in my uh, a snowbank yeah. in snow, and I let it wait seven days, and it it looked like a Bigfoot track. Right. The the treads were gone. The 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 shape the arch was gone. The whole nine. I mean, it's just it's different just places. Wonderful. I understand yep. that, but in so track again, yes, they could be misinterpreted. Could they not? That not by me and not by him. Well, not by him. He's we're not we're not newbies, Steve. We're not newbies. We're not idiots. I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying that uh, track. How are you going to miss? Track, how do you misinterpret? How do you misinterpret an 18-inch track? How do you misinterpret an 18-inch track? Tell me. In snow, it's very easy because an 18-inch track, after a day of sunlight, can, can actually be a a, a six-inch track. And what happens is is that when hey, the sun beats whoa. down on it, you can get melt, and that is true. Steve, Steve, who said it was there for a day? I didn't. I never said it was there for a day. Well, the, the, uh, these were fresh tracks. The, fresh, F R E S H, fresh, fresh did you, tracks. Did you? Well, did the uh, gentleman from Walla Walla, Washington, did he see the tracks being made? <laughs> I got no, him, because then he would have okay, filmed Bigfoot then, doing it. But, then, but, but wait a minute, stop! Okay. There's something you don't know. There's something you need to know. There's something you need to know here that you okay. don't know. Shoot me the present. They went up. They went up. They went up in a couple of pickup trucks. A bunch of these guys. Uh, um, <clears throat> Brian and his friends. Now, now let me let me uh, let me say that. Yes, he you know he was no idiot. I, I mean, his theories were all fakakta. Yeah, but he, he was not a um, he, he was not an idiot by any means. Well, he was, like I, I said, he's he... a member of Mensa. Very yeah. intelligent guy could understand some a lot of deep concepts. But uh, you know, you can take a concept and apply them wrong. Um, yeah. And this whole quantum I, Bigfoot thing is, I, you know, that's I'm going on today is. A trend here, Steve, that every time you try to steer him away from his way of thinking, he's like, no, you know, this is and, concrete. You know, I'm correct, 100%. And uh, can't do that. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, and you know what, Leon, if uh, just throw me a, a thumbs up in the chat. But when we're done uh, with this, uh, if you want to come on and talk about some of the things you're observing through his, I'm, I'm kind of not focusing so much on, on the psychological or the behavioral aspects of what he's saying. Uh, just this is more entertainment for me, but I would love to have your evaluation of uh, his, you know, the way he's talking and stuff like that. I would love to have you on. I'll throw you a link in Facebook if you'd like to come on at, at the conclusion of this. His wife, his kids, and they went up a couple pickup trucks, and they drove up this snowy road. And then after 20 minutes, they turned around and they came back. They found fresh tracks crossing the road crossing over their own car tracks. That's pretty fresh. Very well. In other words, the tracks were... Well, yes, he uh, he definitely was uh, had a very big narcissistic side to him. Absolutely. Very condescending. Absolutely. Made within 20 minutes. Thank you very well, Lee. Let me throw out our phone number to the folks, Mark. You want to give our callers the phone number? Poop yeah, everywhere. Poop. Area code 347-996-5800. That's 347-996-5800. Anybody that wants to call in. Yep, come on. Give us a call, folks. We're having a lively discussion here tonight. And uh, we have again on our, uh, as our guest, uh, Eric Spector. Uh, that was an understatement. <laughs> good old California. <laughs> And, uh, well, I, I, guess I have a comment, Steve, about sure. controversy. Sure. Controversy is a good thing. Oh, I, it is I, a I, good I, thing. If you don't have controversy, you have a dead program. Oh, I, you I, want I, controversy. I, I, I listen I, to these other programs by, uh, by other people that I won't name where everybody's sitting around agreeing with each other, saying, oh, isn't that nice you found this, and isn't that nice you found that, oh, wow, wow. But it doesn't go anywhere. It's controversy. Okay. That brings out the new stuff. Controversy. I, I, you I want agree with controversy. that wholeheartedly. And if anything, it makes for good radio. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, Where everybody agrees, that's bad radio. Yeah. Maybe we should be that, more that, controversial, that uh, Steve. You know, um, I'll, I'll just start agreeing again, with Again, you had made some uh, uh, remark correct. about variations. Why do we have different creatures? Yeah. And the plain, simple point is there could be very varying biological factors going on, too. For example, the, the squashes that we have generally in the northeast here are long-haired and skinny. But we've seen them also a little more plumper. And what it seems to be is that it's depending on the time of year and the time of season. For example, if they're seen early on in the season, May, uh, May April, they're seen very he, he grungy, the, mangy, and skinny. As the season progresses towards the end of the season this time of year, go generally low. they're more beefed up. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say that, you know, they're different species because one's fatter than the other. That happens in a lot of different animals. I mean, you look at the deer, they're in different times of season, and there's times of season here when our deer are very beefed up, and there's other times in the season, especially in the springtime, they're very skinny as well. But they don't also, have enough to eat to do all that. They don't have enough to eat to do that, to do it your way. I barely. There isn't enough food there. I would stop saying. Yeah, he was. It was so there was a question here, too. Uh, he should have, this guy should have been on Art Bell. <coughs> um, he actually was on March 2nd, 2004. Yeah. John Eric Beckford, the director for the Bigfoot Investigation Project. Yeah. I like to use to call it BIP. I <laughs> discuss, discussed the first-hand research into the mystery of Sasquatch, which he believes is paranormal in origin. I knew he had been on. I, yep. I didn't know what the name of the show was. but Yeah, yep. and we even have the date. It was Tuesday, March paranormal, 2nd, 2004. Paranormal Bigfoot. Yep. Say that. There's deer, especially in the forest. In the I north. would say that. I would, I would say that. I would say that. The fact that there are deer is meaningless. It's how many of them that they kill that counts. And well, I, I furthermore, we have a lot of cases, there. Steve. Yep. Steve, there's a lot of cases where they will take a deer and uh, maybe eat the livers or maybe take some of the guts and not necessarily eat the guts, just pull them out, let them lie there, 
and then they don't eat the venison. They don't eat the meat. And that's not right, because if you have a flesh and blood animal, well, a bear, for instance, of the same size, takes 90 pounds of meat to eat every day. I was looking at the lion cage yesterday in the zoo. Man, those babes were eating and eating and eating and growling and eating, and they have these huge muscles and paws and everything. Man, they have to eat a lot to survive. Yeah. And they don't go surviving a little roots and shoots and berries and, and, and a few crayfish from the, from the pond. They have to eat big-time meat. And the same thing goes with grizzly bears. They have to eat tons and tons of salmon to put on some fat. And they leave all kinds of debris. And they leave poop everywhere. Poop. And I've walked, there through it, it walked in it, walked around it. And I can tell when I've got a bear tracks going and poop, the bear and the poop are together. You do not find this with Bigfoot. You uh, might find very little poop ever. Well, but there is. So I said like ever. That. You find very little, very little. They're, they aren't pooping out very much at all. Maybe okay. they make a big dump once in a while, but they, they don't put out any kind of... And, of course, at some point, the conversation turns shitty. ...kind <laughs> of amount of poop like a bear does, and if it's the same kind of metabolism of a flesh-and-blood earthly animal... It should be doing that, and it doesn't. I, I have one question. How did we get what on goes this in trappy, must come out. How did we get on this crappy topic to begin with? <laughs> no, I, realistically... Um, well, it disgusted Letterman, too. But nevertheless, <laughs> it's, a, it's a major factor here. This is a major fact. And this well, is what something I'm saying is, that is some that people have saying, admitted to me on the Internet that shoots them down because there isn't any poop. <laughs> Okay, hang on. Let, let me get my question out of here, Eric. My question to you is, if this, well, let me let me let me precede this question with a question. Do you consider Bigfoot an intelligent creature, more intelligent than we are? Obviously, if it's moving through interdimensions. Who's in the zoo and who's in the jail and who isn't? Well, that doesn't answer my question. Mm -hmm. Human beings are in jails. Other animals are in the zoo, but Bigfoot is not, so it's smarter than any of us. Okay. Then why is it that we wear pants and we go on a toilet or we go in a stream and not just defecate right on the ground all over the back of itself? Well, why is it, if it's that much smarter than we are, does it do that? Who's, why does who it poop this? on the spaceship? I guess that's my question. <laughs> or, or the, where it's coming from. I need to understand your question a little better. <laughs> there I am getting my laps in. Well, you it's yourself not said, well, the question is very clear. You, by your own admission, say there has been some scat that's attributed to Bigfoot. So obviously, why? I mean, if it's why so much what? smarter than us, you know, why doesn't it use the John if there's a John? I mean... There's been plenty of well, sightings because, on camp, campgrounds. Uh, well, because Donald Trump hasn't built a lot of Bigfoot Johns out in the woods. And there's the Trump oh. comment back in 2006. Wow. Forgot that. Well, I did well, why too. Not wear that was all the money. Why doesn't it wear pants? Why doesn't it wear clothing uh, to protect it from its elements? Why doesn't it you know, wear gloves? I mean, if it's going into a hostile environment such as the woods... Why doesn't it wear footwear? Why doesn't it wear something to protect its eyes? Why doesn't it wear something to protect its hands? And, and this is completely before I got onto the whole kick of the bacteria and the viral uh, environments that it wouldn't have immunity to. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> she says, <laughs> truth. <laughs> It doesn't. So that's telling me... I can it, answer it, you. Okay, well, I'm, I'm looking forward I, to that. I, I got answers for your questions. I really have answers. Um, I have right. obtained a, a number... Of, well, I, I have answers for your questions if I can answer. I have obtained uh, in my research in Washington State... Now, mind you, I'm the reason why I got quiet was because I was laughing. <laughs> when I was living there... I had a lot of people calling my hotline, and I would visit uh, them and, and mute out fill out for report forms and so forth. Ooh. And I met a couple of people that had talked to me about Bigfoot wearing 
very dirty, filthy leather trousers, <laughs> some kind of a vest. Some I sort also of talked a vest. to a kidnapped, <laughs> kidnappy person, the person who was kidnapped, who said that he had seen them sewing up leather garments from deer skin <laughs> to wear. You know, he didn't tell me they were wearing these, but apparently they were making them, maybe for the winter, I don't know. Um, there are also reports in the, um, in the, in the board Here we go. Uh, reports books. Um, Janet and Colin Board have these Bigfoot reports. There are a few reports here and there of Bigfoot being in trousers or having a cape uh, or leading another one that was in a cape by a rope or something. Um, there are also, and to me this is the most intriguing of all, there are some reports of motorists um, seeing somebody by the road, and it turns out to be Bigfoot, wearing human blue jeans that are all ripped up and looking um, and a shirt and looking like really desperate, like, save me, save me, I want to get back to you guys, you know, I want to be back with you guys. And I think that that's a situation where somehow we had a, uh, a mind manifestation type of Bigfoot that, or, or a change where someone changed from being a human being into a Bigfoot wearing the same clothes. But and then later on, he changes back. Hurting. So apparently sometimes they do have clothing if you believe reports. If you don't believe reports, then they don't. But, but I, I have to say this. If you're talking about something yeah. that's coming from a complete new universe, why are these witnesses stating things that are of this planet? In other words, you see deer skin, you see blue jeans, and what appears to be a ripped T-shirt. Those are all things that exist here. It, 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 so? it would be beyond comprehension. I mean, think about it. You look at look at the UFO report. Beyond your comprehension? Uh, beyond beyond my, whose comprehension? It, uh, whatever see, they're wearing. Beyond would be. your beyond your personal comprehension? No, no, no. It would be beyond our comprehension as a human being. They would be wearing something completely different. Look at, look at I don't think you. I don't think you get. The, you don't fully get the idea of an alternate universe. Let me explain again. Well, you I can have I universe. I understand that. Number, point, but what I'm saying is, I don't think you do. I, I don't think you do. Well, I'm going to try and fill in a few points here that maybe you'll now, see. How many? Me. How many okay, times? Let me have a universe one more time. Uh, our calling number is going to be three four seven nine nine six five eight zero zero. I think you were starting. And you know to what? That up, that's yeah. how that's how I shut him down with that. When yeah. I go up, we got another caller. Yeah. No. Come on, folks, give us a call in here. Let's get the show livened up some more. Okay, Eric, go on. Back to you. If you have an infinite number, and I want you to think about the term infinity. If you think about infinity long enough, you'll go insane. Infinity goes on forever. I know. I'm. Think of an endless. An endless. <laughs> oh boy. Well, you know, um, there's there's always a match. dot com, but anyway, um, there are there's a there's an endless stretch of infinite number of universes, and you can find one that is exactly like ours, except that nobody's married. <laughs> you can find another one where everyone is married. You can find another one where everybody is black. You can find another one where everyone is uh, Chicano. And you can find another universe where everyone is white. You can find another universe where everything is stuck in, in 1492 and never advanced past Here that. Here comes a comment. You can find another universe where everything is just simply chalk, gray, black, with no life in it whatsoever. Hey, and if you I can throw have this another point, universe where my co-host is actually taller than me, but I'm bumped. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. Huh? I, 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 Fine. I, 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 and he can and he can be wearing clothes like you, like yours. He could be wearing a, he could be wearing a, a five year old plaid uh, shirt and some torn jeans. That's right. With holes in the boots, he could be doing that. <laughs> you could have another word world where everyone looks like Bob Gimlin. I, I just don't anything know. goes. I just hope I anything goes. Anything goes in these places. And if yes, they come here, they bring anything goes with them. But why can't we go there? We do. We do. <laughs> Where do you think you go when your head hits the pillow? And to sleep. <laughs> to sleep. What is sleep? Uh, it is sleep is a Sleep facilitates you going to another parallel universe. 
That's why you have these strange dreams. <sighs> but I don't have strange dreams. <laughs> Not What's always. You, dude? <laughs> Not What's always. you, dude? <laughs> well, I mean, I... Maybe you have dreams where, where all the women are, are available and hot for you. I don't think so. Well, you know, I, I don't have strange dreams. I just, when I'm awake, I seem stranger than when I go to bed. So I, I don't understand that, but... Well, I, I understand there, the There is more to the universe than you could ever dream of. There's, um, I think it was well, Shakespeare said, there's, there, there is more to heaven and earth than is dreamt of in your philosophy, Horatio. And that's true. There is more to heaven and earth and all, on all the other dimensions than is dreamt of by us, than we can figure out. We don't know what's out there, but there's a lot more that we can't even dream of, can't even guess about. But my, my, it's weird. My, it's, it's just simply weird, weird, weird. And that weirdness comes here. That's why we have things like the Dover Demon that this, uh, this liar and thief Coleman talks about. That's why we have uh, Eric, phantom Eric, kangaroos. Eric, let's be careful. I said we're not going to attack other people tonight. We might even have a parallel universe where, where Tom Biscardi is honest. Uh, again, Eric, we are not going to attack other people tonight. Uh, why not? It's such fun. No, it's really not. Uh, it, it, it besmirches the whole field when we start bickering amongst ourselves. The whole field, the whole field is full of frauds and bullshitters. Didn't you know this? All right, let's let's keep it back on topic. And the topic tonight was this paranormal theory. And uh, you know, tonight's discussion, I, it's not a, not a shot to besmirch anybody or, or the nag and. Frankly, if somebody calls in and tries to knock you because of what you believe, I'm going to hang up on it. So I just ask that we keep this whole thing on topic. And um, that's the ground rules tonight. And, uh, but, uh, knock me. In. I can take it. But the question is, can they take what I throw back? Well, I, I'd rather not find out. I'd rather, I, I don't want to have a Springer show. I want to have a lively debate, but I don't want Although Eric did come back a month <laughs> later. Yeah. And Sean Forker was on. Yeah. And uh, Sean Forker gave it back to him. And he says, I can take it. Eric Beckert ended up hanging up and not coming back. <laughs> Sean Forker has the ultimate dubious honor of getting Eric Beckert to shut up. Got him to hang up. Yes. A Jerry Springer type show where people are... The Jerry Springer is very popular. <laughs> Yeah, all right. yeah, I know, but he's also not very respected as far amongst the, the the hosts of television. So, and you can see very early, very early in the creation of this show, it's much more about having a an intelligent show than a popular show. Yeah. Well, well, here's the problem: we have a lot of people out here who want to be respectable because they think in terms of flesh and blood. But yet it's gone on now for at, at least 40 years more and more with no flesh and blood results, but they're still hanging on like a, like a 90-year-old single woman waiting to get married. It doesn't happen. Well, I will say this. Is it possible? Certainly anything is possible. Do I particularly subscribe to it? I don't think so because, like I said, if these things were more intelligent than us, you know, I think they would be more equipped for the terrain. And the other thing you had mentioned about dreams. They don't need to be. Hold on a second. Let they me don't need that. to be equipped for the terrain. Let me oh, ask they're, you, they're, they're, let me ask they're, you they're question. apparently are hotter than we are. They breathe faster, and they have a, heat, a higher heat signature. Apparently they're warmer than they need to be, so they don't have to wear a coat. Okay. But let me ask you this question. There's a lot of times I dream, and I'm in a city setting, and it's people I know, or I'm in a sitting city setting where people I don't know, or I'm in a wooded setting and there's nobody around, or how come these things don't appear in the middle of cities or in the middle of my living room or the middle of the street uh, in a suburban type neighborhood, but they appear in the woods and in the wilderness, in particular wilderness areas, but they don't appear, you know, in, in metropolitan areas. Why, why is that? They, I mean, if, they appear in an, in an invisible form. Answer for okay. everything. And how when they go inside that? of a city, answer, answer they go invisible because they don't want to cause traffic accidents. They're being and, very generous to us. But, but if a Bigfoot appeared in downtown traffic, it would cause big accident, don't you think? 
Uh, very well could be. I know a moose uh, can pretty much cause a pile up in Albany once. Uh, but so, I, so Bigfoot goes invisible when they're going downtown, so as to not create an accident. But where's the proof to that? How do we know that? I mean, is this just a theory, or is there some actual proof that goes along with that? And then that's that's where the flesh and blood people have the problem with that. Well, well, well you know, Steve, if I have proof of uh, if I have total proof of absolutely everything we're talking about here. I wouldn't be on this program. I'd be in front of the Nobel Prize Committee in Sweden getting my Nobel Prize. Absolutely. I wouldn't be here. I'd be in Life Magazine. I'd be on CNN, okay? Um, and it's because we haven't found these answers yet that we're still on programs like yours. And, my, and I'm hoping that by so doing that I can encourage people to call our Bigfoot hotline why don't you throw them at out that number? And at 415-289-2277. 289-2277 in your 415 area code. And, and how about your website? They have. It's, uh, very, it's B-E-C-K-J-O-R-D dot yeah. com. If you can't remember that, then think of Bigfoot dot O-R-G. There you go. We got our numbers. And again, our, for our callers out there, our number is area code 347-996-5800. And uh, for those who are wondering, we're not on Yahoo Messenger tonight uh, because I, I would just feel completely overwhelmed. We'll be running the board, running the soundboard, and, uh, and doing the other things. But so far, uh, oh, yeah, everything Messenger. tonight has gone off without a hitch. <laughs> and that's amazing. <laughs> Now, i got a question for Steve Kalt. Go ahead. Shoot there. You mean? You haven't, you've only been this five years or less as far as I know. Oh, no. Now, I haven't, you ever, haven't you ever considered that back in 1958, people were still talking about the same things like this, and it's gone on years after years, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 70, 80, 90, Wow, like we can't thousand, count, and Eric. Nothing happens. Oh, if absolutely. this was a normal animal, if this is a normal animal, you would find a dead one on the tracks, on the road, in the creek, at the bottom of a cliff, someplace, and we never, never do. Yeah, it was. And that's a violation of Murphy's Law. Well, it very, very well could be, but it also could be Murphy's Law at its best as well, too. We're trying to prove it. Of course, we're not being able to find it. How many times have we stumbled over and not actually observed it? You've got to understand there's a lot of people out there in this field that are advocational while not professional. I don't buy that. It's gone on too long. Well, I too long, man. Too long. No, too long. Know, I, All these excuses, these excuses do not wash anymore. Okay, how long did it take to prove the mountain gorilla existed? All right, so, so that that is where I had my Zen realization that the only reason why he switched over to this is because of his own arrogance, yeah. his own, you know, anthro, so pen, um, anthro, uh, anthro, uh, yeah. anthropocentrism, his own anthropocentrism. Sorry, I'm still having enunciation problems with certain words. And, uh, you know, I see Leon is getting ready to pop on. We're almost done. Leon, it's going to be about another Maybe about ten minutes, and we'll bring Leon on. And the mountain gorilla was thought of as a monster, and they thought it was nothing. It took six months. six months. Six months. Six months. No, it didn't. Six months. Because I'll tell you something about the mountain gorilla, and that's something that that I'm I'm shocked that you would bring that up. This was again. Uh, and it took him how many years? It took him like thirty six years for the giant panda. So. Eighteen fifty six. In eighteen fifty six, people came back from Africa saying. There are these big hairy gorilla type. There's these hairy things. Now you do the math. When was the mountain gorilla discovered? It was in the 1920s. <laughs> so he's talking about 1856. That they call gorillas down there that beat in their chest in the in the central Congo, and in six months, there an expedition got on some steamships and took rifles and equipment down there, and they steamed on down in ships down to Africa. And they went to the area that was in mention, and they found a mountain gorilla, and they shot him and brought him back. It was once they were told about it, and once they had the equipment to look, which like steamships and guns, 
it wasn't hard to do. It wasn't. It wasn't that. Uh, and now there were reports before, but nobody ever went. When they finally did go, it was a done deal. Now we've been hearing about Bigfoot since 565 A.D., and we do not find them, and we do not kill them. We cannot. Eric, it has not happened. Eric, we have a caller. Let me uh, put him here on. We go. Uh, give me one second here, and caller from the five one six area code. You are on the air. A new victim. Yeah, hi, hi, Steve. How how are you tonight, Mike from Long oh. Island? How are you doing, Mike? All right, Steve. Uh, well, uh, before I even get to a question, I guess uh, just an opening statement, uh, Steve. Uh, you know, I think you, you kind of got your hands full tonight here with uh, with EB. Uh, <laughs> yeah, was, oh, he always will. He always will. He always will because Steve hasn't got a leg to stand on. Uh huh. Well, all right. Well. Steve is calling from an old, old position. It's dead. A dead, old stand. Well, okay. That's it's like he's, he's in a deer stand using dead cartridges. Right. All right. Well, uh, I see it's going to be difficult to get a word in edgewise, so I'm just going to have to try this question, uh, squeeze this question right in there. EB, uh, you mentioned that, uh, you know, people search all over and they haven't found the body yet. And you say if this, if this was a, uh, a flesh and blood creature that you should be able to find a body, correct? This is your position. My position is that it isn't a question of searching. Searching is interesting and is helpful, but, but you see, with, um, with all the other animals, giraffes and water buffalo and uh, American Bullshit buffalo artists. and deer and elk and bears, all these things are subject to disease and accidents as well as hunting. But also they also, well. okay, they also well. get hit. They also get hit by cars and trucks, and that they're so they result. They wind up showing up dead for some reasons or other, and it has nothing to do with hunting for them or searching. They can they show up in natural places. Well, this that, never, that, never, never happens with Bigfoot. That's correct. That is correct. But E. B. You forget. Bigfoot is a creature with hands like human beings, and it has been has been theorized by many different people that maybe the reason people don't find them is because they bury their dead like people do. Now those other Prove animals, it. those other animals you're talking about that you find dead, they lack a, you know opposable thumbs, so they cannot Prove it. use tools. They can't Prove it. They can't Mike, bury themselves. Mike, Prove it. Mike and Eric, show me some proof. Not Eric. Show me some proof. Not to mention, not to mention E.B. Uh, how many bears are found dead in the woods that, uh, you know, have not been killed by man, that, that die of natural One death? every month. No. One every month. One hey, every dude. Month. One every month. In okay, well, I'll tell you oh. what. Mike, Mike. I've, I've, I've heard the argument over and over. I At that point, I muted him. Yeah. Because I knew that was bull. Well, that's <laughs> Mike the, from Long Island. You know, he had a show with body. Bob. I can't remember what it was called. Bigfoot <laughs> Quest. Bigfoot Quest. Is it? Uh, Mike Hillen and uh, Bob Coyne. Bob Coyne, yeah. Yep, they came on uh, within like three or four months after Sean did. Yeah. There could be other explanations for that. You know, I'm just saying. Could be does not cut it. Could be yeah. does not cut it. After so. Well, but, but, right, I well, cut him I again. I can't prove my point, but but you you don't. You know, you're not going to be able to prove your point either. I mean, it, it, you know, until until one is found and until it, it's determined what it is, everything is a theory. And you have yours, and and some other people have their own. But your 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 view is no more important and carries no more weight than anybody else's. Just re keep that in mind, DB. Mike, 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 hang on one second, there, Mike. Hang on one second. Let me let me just uh, put put Eric back on the line here. One quick second. One thing. Here. You're forgetting one thing. Bigfoot, talk to me. <laughs> they told me this. Oh God! Oh, wow! I think you lost Mike. And uh, Mike, if you look now, mind you, I was like, uh, uh. Never had anything in, Mike never had anything in the first place. But we, well, uh, hang on a second. <laughs> hang on a second, Eric. Let me let me take you to task on that. Okay, there's Mike. Let me take you to task on that. The creatures you have mentioned, all numbered like deer, they number in the millions across the United States. We're talking maybe about 5,000 creatures nationwide here, 
and theirs again are in the millions. So you'd expect to see a one every once in a while as well. But you're here, saying we have a million bears in this country? Uh, Get off. The latest census. A million, but a million black bears. Come on. Well, we definitely we have six million deer alone in New York State. So. <laughs> yeah, take that. I knew my numbers at that point in time. <laughs> yeah, we we have we have a million deer. We have something like uh, our our bears were in the tens of thousands. Well, you yeah. bring up deer, and like I said, I've never talked to a hunter that's come across a dead deer, a dead bear in the woods. And you know what? I've talked to a lot of hunters that have been hunting up here for many a year. I don't care about your hunters, my friend. I'm talking about the rangers in the, I think it's the Kootenay National Park up in, in Yukon Territory. They run across dead grizzly bears every what's, month. What's the population of grizzlies up there? Excuse me? What's the population of grizzlies up there? Nope, you don't know it. I think it's about 2,000. In, in that park, about 2,000. Okay, well, you're talking about something that has a population nationwide of about two to 5,000. So whereas there, there may be, you know, there may only be 25 of these creatures in a particular area. Mike, you have any other questions? I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think you fully understand the concept of Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law says, to remind you, sir, that if anything can go wrong, it will at the worst possible time, which means to say that we all have mistakes and accidents, okay? Everyone, Eric, no matter how rare they are. Eric, hang on one second. Everyone. Uh, Mike, you have another question? I got another caller on the other line. Uh, no, Steve, I think that was it. Basically, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you know, it, it's not gonna if I remember, this next caller is going to be a good one. It's going to be a two-way conversation uh, with Mr. Uh, Beckford, so I, I figure I'll just leave it at that. But I will, I will ask him one more question. Uh, E.B., if it's at all possible, keep in mind this is the Squatch Detective Show. We'll try to let Steve run the show a little bit here and there. That's all I have. Take care, Steve. Good luck with the rest of the show. You're going to need it. Take care, Mike. My answer to Mike, which means he's still listening, is that Steve may be a nice guy personally, but he's extremely wrong. Uh, well, uh, you know, that's a matter of opinion. <laughs> and no, caller from you the are wrong. Area, caller from the area code 530, you're on the air. How are you tonight? Really good. I have a question. Um, I'm all into the multiverse theory and everything. And all I'm sorry, I'm Drake from Davis. But I have a couple questions for Mr. Beckford. If he spoke to Bigfoot, was he in their universe or ours, and what did he say? I'll take my answer off the air. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Now, now hold on. Uh, now, I'm like, uh, you know, there's no way Eric's going to answer this. Uh, well, um, well, I have an answer. No, okay. <laughs> And the answer is that I, I believe we were in this universe. And I believe they were too. And one of them seemed to say to me that, we're not real. We're here, but we're not real like you think of real as being real. We're a different kind of real. We're not here. We're not real in the normal sense. Um, and and I, I was taking pictures. I took pictures at the time. This was in the winter. It's the same location where I got a picture of Bigfoot this summer in September, which is a 10-footer and that, on my that's... website, Vecure.com. And that is the picture you're looking at, and I'm sorry it's not larger. I, I don't know why it did not uh, expand out, but there is nothing there but a blob squatch. So, Come. But in any case, um, the, and it's not Beck Ford. There's no F in my name at all. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> the the point was that they were trying to they were ta they were telling me this, and at the same time. Around that same time, I also took quite a few pictures of the snow and the logs and the creek and everything. And there are we'll images put that in the trees up, uh, and around the logs the and rocks. There are images of strange heads that look primate-like to me. I don't make a big deal of those because they're much better ones that I have. But they, those still existed, and I got them at that time. And it led me to believe that the creatures that spoke to me were connected with Bigfoot. Now, can I prove this? No. But I can say to you that I have found tracks that will suddenly disappear in snow. There's now a videotape showing tracks that disappear in snow. Well, now, now that, that changed. Also, I had a situation no, where Bigfoot just vanished in front of my eyes and then reappeared to two of my partners running down a bank in the mud 
It jumped a fence. And never, never names the down. partners. And there was no tracks on the other side in mud for, for 200 feet. Things like that are just not standard, normal, zoological at all. Not unless Bigfoot has wings. And if that's true, then he has to be bat squatch. But I don't think so. Wow. Okay, well, we are just about up for time on our show tonight, and it's been a quick hour, I must say. It's just flown by. Eric Gong, I still can't hold a second. Now you understand why we do two-hour shows. Any uh, parting thoughts for our listeners out there? Yes, I want you to go and look at my website on a new page that is now number four on Google. If you go to Google and search under this topic, it is the number four listing out of 43,000 listings, and that is beckyard.com slash Biscardi. All right. Number now, four. What? You know, now, hang on a second. I, I will not condone any site out there that, that can tear somebody apart. And uh, if people want to check out com. that's fine. And... Well, there you have it, and that pretty much ended the uh, yeah the uh, the show there. Um, yeah, I had forgot that uh, that he said that you know I had remembered that he said Bigfoot had spoke with spoke to him, but uh, he mentioned these other beings that were related or connected to Bigfoot. Uh, that I had forgot that. I don't know what that was all about. Uh, <laughs> Either does he? I, I, I wonder, Leon. Uh, what What do you think about the the whole uh, Eric Bechtcher spiel? Uh, if there's anything that makes me want to walk, it's watching that video. <laughs> Not because it's helpful, but because I gotta run away from this guy. <laughs> narcissistic gaslighting oh, oh you think his, his, law, yeah, his law his law is different than our law you know you, don't, you you can't make up the rules but I will make up all the rules and I will put my arm around you as I wait for you to say what it's saying out of my mouth so I think we <laughs> have found where the woo entered into the Bigfoot community in regards to an influence because back in those days he was on TV a lot he's the big yeah. guy yeah. Uh, and that idea you can even hear the woo kind of defenders and how they debate back they're almost like scientologists they just spiel keep spewing keep spewing keep spewing try to get your brain overwhelmed you know steve steve you know you don't know what you're talking about see if you, you don't understand that they're talking about all these 25 cent words all the right? gaslighting yep like, yeah you know and also like yeah. they throw the mixture of science terminology pseudoscience terminology and like, the minute like, i ask him a legitimate question he turns oh, around yeah. and says i don't understand your question yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, the gene was the gene one was. I just I was just going. You're you're saying they don't do clothes. <clears throat> then you say they're the story of this person who saw one on the side of the road with ripped jeans and all that kind of stuff. And then your point of yeah, if I was going to another country, if I'm going down to Florida and I live in Canada right now, I'm not going to wear my Canadian clothes into Florida. I'm going to redress for the environment. Right. And again, like he. Everything he says is just the apophenia, you know, the ideas. He's got all these great ideas. He also, he, he also reminded me of what I deal with cold readers for psychics that, you know, they're there to talk to your family yep. members that are passed on. They do all this cold reading kind of mumbo jumbo kind of stuff. And, and, and he's, he doesn't care what you're going to say, man. He, he, no. he, he, his, his joy is the game of getting questions and then just slaughtering you with his perspective of understanding H hence his hence his um his wording on that when when we took a caller up next victim what killed me mike from long island was on there and mike just pops out a perfectly reasonable thing and and, and a reminder to beckford hey well you know um because Be beckford just dismissing what mike says Okay, you don't have any proof. And then Mike says, well, you know, it's uh, for you know, your theory. That's just your opinion. Everybody's got their own theory. You know, your opinion is your theory is no better than anybody else's. And then Bechter just snaps right back. Boom. Well, Bigfoot has talked to me. 
They speak to me. So that validates his theory over anybody else's. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I'm just like, blows me away. I'm like, yeah. And he doesn't remember where he saw Bigfoot at, whether he was speaking to him. Well, I think it was our dimension. I think it was our dimension. I think he would know. Yeah, this is my dimension. You guys, where you are at, you're, that's your dimension. I was also thinking too, was I was trying to think of who who is like him today and who kept coming to my mind was Steve Ishtel. He, he does the same kind of thing. I know everything. You guys don't understand. There's something else going on. He's putting up this conspiracy style of thought processing that he has where he has all the answers instead of, you know, I'm a, I'm a talker and stuff like that. So I could be accused of talking like that. But the thing is, I'll bow the knee if you give me something, you know, like, well, you, well, Steve, you can't do that. So you just don't understand, you know, like, OK, what is that center part about those that goat thing walking over through the snow and then over through the wall? Where's the yeah. inside information about? Did you go see this place, by the way? Oh, no, no. Did you visualize it? No, he doesn't check any of the, the evidence out. The emails Steve gets from. You know, his storytellers, if you want to believe the witnesses, oh, should I feel bad if I don't want to believe the witnesses? Is that why you're saying that statement? I should believe all witnesses. You know, I've been in this enough to know that, well, all of us have, that in most cases, the, the brain too, gets tricked too easily. And uh, and by good, and gets tr- good people with, good, with brains get tricked easily. And, and to just take it at, you know, it's... Oh. It was madness. Uh, it was madness, is what it was. In actuality, Steve, uh, Kawani Lapsaritis uh, uses that all the time. You know, he has. Um, I remember uh, Rennie DeHinden saying, you know, you know, James L- Lapsaritis has 243 Sasquatch Bigfoot experiences in his mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah and he says, and, I don't care about and, and, Bigfoot in the brain, in the mind. Yeah. I don't want to see a Bigfoot. Right. And then his follow up, you know, that, that, that's like, you know, saying you've had, uh, you know, 243 sexual experiences, but never getting laid. Yeah. That, that, was, that was how we followed up on it. Yeah, yeah. But, what, what, what kills me when, when uh, Eric would, would say, okay, well, he was talking about the, the 1856 uh, UK. Uh, the goat man tracks or devil yeah. tracks, whatever it was walking in the leaving tracks yes. in the snow and then walking through trees and walking through walls. Well, the caller asks, asked a perfectly respectable question and kind of, it seems like to me, he's kind of drag trying to drag Eric back to reality a little bit and said, well, you know, if it could walk past through these walls, it wasn't solid. Then why was it leaving tracks in the snow? You know, Right. Right. Why, 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 why would it be solid one second and then, well, you just don't understand how these things work. You know? yeah. <laughs> and you do. So tell us, tell us that part, you know, yeah. these yeah. grand statements like, so how are they coming over from dementia, by the way? Because I don't, did he actually say how, how they come from one dimension to ours? Did, no. no. Did, oh, he didn't, the portal word hasn't caught caught on i guess back then at that point. But the idea again if he's if it's coming from here uh, why is no it- probably not steve <laughs> yeah yeah I, I just dealt with listening to an hour of sarcasm <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well i mean so- I, I i'm surprised you could that's a especially on, on your earlier years to be on a show like that have that kind of barrage just you know, like, and you're trying to get him back to him, and he he wants to get back to him, but it reminds me of uh, uh, Johnson there on uh, Bigfoot Odyssey. There, as long as it's on his dime, in other words, he's always in control. That's one reason why he's talking all the time. Heaven right. forbid anyone asks you the right questions. And oh God, I, I'm not kidding though. It was torturous. But just like I like I like the show. I don't know if I can handle this because I can't take this anymore. I mean, that's why I'm not on many shows. That I know, and it's going to get less and less and less because the madness that's out there. And that video is a great, our interview is a great example of the madness. It's still right. here. It's just sh- shined up a bit or polished a bit more. But the talk is the same talk, the same. He has all the answers. That goes back to the idea of being deal with psychics and stuff. They always have to have an answer for every question or if you're in a cult. The cult always has to answer all these questions, you know, especially if it's a Christian cult, you could say, because well, in the Bible it says this. Well, actually, in the Bible it means this it's the cults thing. They'll always have a counterbalance question, so you can tell that this guy has spent hours ruminating in his mind of every every question you might ask him, and that's why he he loves the game. He loved and that, that came with that one time. He says, "I need you to clarify the question to you, Steve." <laughs> you know, like 
she's pretty plain with what he's asking here you know he's not asking yeah yeah strange and, you know he's not talking quantum physics he's not talking you know algebra <laughs> he's just asking basic questions but man he he needs you to ask it a certain way so he has one of his respondent questions in this little file bank there he can throw out your way and again his they always need to be standby ones so for instance the people for that are doing cold readings that are reading your you know supposed to be talking to your dead body See. Or, Relatives, dead bodies. Yeah, they always say that was sar their sarcasm right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know. That was terrible. Is the idea that they always have the standby, which is while well, you don't have the faith or you don't have a pure heart, that's why you're not seeing them. This is one that's online sometimes. Yep. You're not yep. hearing up, you know, Johnson. So let me let me ask you a couple of questions about what you've picked up from Eric. Um, it's madness. That's what I'm saying. It's madness. Okay. Anyways. But, but, but madness. It, 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 it's quite uh, obviously. Um, he used to be a flesh and blood guy when he first came out. I think one of two things happened. And I really think it's the latter. First, maybe he wasn't getting enough attention being a flesh and blood guy. Or two, um, because of his very narcissistic personality which is very apparent in everything he does there a little bit I, is it possible that like i said uh anthropocentrism goes in that you know if we can't find them we we, we can't you know we we've had all these years we can't find them it's got to be this other explanation and i think that you know we've had a lot of of very respected researchers move over to that um uh, type of theory like Ron Moorhead trying to explain, you know, quantum, the quantum Bigfoot. Right. I think that anthropocentrism has a big part to play in that, that if we can't um, find it, well, it's got to be something else. It can't be flesh and blood because we can't find it. You know, uh, it's our own human arrogance. Yeah. Well, is, I think, that, what do you think? I think what people keep forgetting is there's circuitry and mechanisms in the brain. And so with intent, if you're starting to look for something, this is where you have to be cautious of that apophenia, those, that thought process that comes in your mind as your own, sounds like your internal dialogue almost, with ideas. And so there's something familiar to you about that. And again, this idea, if it feels like it connects, therefore it's reality, it's truthful, it's actual. And I think in his case, when I'm looking at, well, when I look at him, I'm just looking at somebody is, he, he's taken like again the scientific method is down here building blocks you brought up the feet this is how we know there you know there's gotta be flesh because they lead tracks he didn't answer the question like a, a good question to, to respond back to him is well steve we're not some stupid people out here in the bush when you read tracks can you tell me what that means to read the track see he never lets you get to the second second question you know right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, or even if you get to if you get to the second right. question he ain't gonna let you go to the third question because he knows he's already stumped by knowing that you're talking to him about the second question which is going to be deeper you know he's talking about all these other kind of nice things but he's not saying the words that we're, we're looking for which is merton's norms you know like uh uh we're, we're looking for the bony detection kit when he talks about you know it's all scientific <laughs> that, that, this is what was driving me crazy it was so black and white it was all white for him in regards to everything he was saying was correct. And you guys were dismissed immediately without any evidence whatsoever. And yet you guys aren't following the law, <laughs> you know, the, that, and you know, when I, that the problem with our brains is all of our brains. It's just not this guy, but they, that's the reason why you got to be awakened, I guess. And we're not talking about woke, like the movement that's happening now in the culture, but you, you have to ask yourself some really serious questions. If he thinks the way he thinks, you think he's very self-reflective? No. No. And I why would that be? So why wouldn't he be self-reflective? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my guess would be because his ideas really do conflict with what he's learned. Right. And, and plus his ideas have become his identity. Yeah, you're yeah. a big threat to him because you're gonna right. you're gonna go after his cherished belief, his belief system. But the problem is he's buying into it. This is where bad thinking, conspiracy oriented thinking, and delusional style thinking can, can be a really detriment to the individual. If you don't know yourself, it's going to come across in regards to your evidence collecting. If you can't look at yourself because you're too afraid of what you might find, then you're going to be too afraid of what you're looking for, or you're going to add on to what you're looking for as evidence up here, though not 
quality evidence in your heart about yourself onto the evidence. And that's what this guy does. I mean, he is so fractured psychologically from himself that if, if for a moment he looked at himself, because I mean, you think of yourself as you, you were thoughts in his head, head asking these questions or the people were, he didn't want to hear those thoughts. He's going to be brushing those all off. And he's, those are the ones he's afraid of. Those are the monsters he's afraid of. But that's what we all have to do is we look at, we're not here to prove a Sasquatch. We're looking for evidence to prove it's not a Sasquatch. That's going to make a he uh, our head scratch. He, But this despotism comes over people over time. It doesn't matter whether it's this topic, politics, religion, or anything. Think like right now, all the prophets who used to, were just hammering on Donald Trump in the evangelical uh, wing down south of the border here of Canada here is they were all talking, you know, the Lord has told us Donald Trump's going to get in here. It's going to be a red wave. All that they, they, And they did this publicly on their channels. And they did this also in 2020 when he lost. Uh, and then they all had to backtrack. But none of them backtracked. One guy backtracked. But then he pulled it off his own video. He said he, he was. Well, look at long look long. at um, look at uh, Dr. Matthew Johnson. Now, yeah. there is another. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I think Matthew Johnson is probably the closest thing to a Vector today. Yeah. And, you know, he said the same thing about, you know, the. Uh, <coughs> Yeah. Sorry, I have a little bit of an upper respiratory thing going. Yeah, um, get out there and walk you. Get out and walk. <laughs> um, <laughs> the um, you know, you know, you look at you know, Zorth had all these presidential election, uh, you know, oh, you know, Zorth told me so and so is going to win, and they didn't win, and so yeah, um, very similar. But I do notice too, um, and this is something. You know, I haven't heard this completely in years. Um, it's just been sitting in my hard drives. And, you know, I said, tonight, let me pull it out. And, oh, man, that worked a bit of trip for you. Um, but one thing I noticed, too, and, and like I said, and, and, and Steve made a, a good point, too, that, you know, mind you, at that point in time, I was very, a very young interviewer. I mean, this is only like episode eight, and I'm taking on this, you know, 800-pound gorilla in the room. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, unchained, uh, unchained. Yeah, yeah. I think, but, I think but, you were doing a, a great job, Steve. I mean, you know, yeah. you were trying to be very accommodating to him. Uh, you were Light. really, really trying yeah. to put him on the spot very much, but you did every now and then <laughs> okay. um, at the right time. But one thing I do notice, and it's an observation now, you know, with all these years, uh, you know, again, this is, you know, 16 years ago. Yeah. So now I have all that much more experience. And one of the things I do notice that, you know, you hear him talk about all these reports, but they're cherry picked. Yeah. You know, you know, they're cherry picked. Those those things he's telling me uh, us about the reports, it's like he's taking the most abstract reports. And he's not putting any. um, Any critical thinking to them at all. Yeah, and he, you know, and could he be? Could that. this person be lying to me? Yeah. That's the thing person... I picked up too was all of his reports were kind of like uh, to get you reactatory. They're all you know. Oh my God, a Bigfoot with ripped jeans and a T-shirt. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, out of all the ones in shoes, he picks that one. You know, the goat, the goat one again. He, he, he's not familiar with the the story. I, I mean, he does a perfect description uh, of the Bigfoot wearing a a a, a shirt and human blue jeans. You know, looking all desperate. No, Eric, that that wasn't a Bigfoot. That was a hitchhiker. Yeah. What was <laughs> that's yeah. what that was? That's that was a hitchhiker. Totally, yeah, totally, yeah. But when he started he, doing that paranormal and Bigfoot wearing blue jeans, that's when he started getting on coast to coast, and that's when he started oh, yeah. getting on uh, Letterman. You know, so I think he saw that as an identity that he could push a little bit, or you know, maybe right. you know, money, maybe a money making machine. I don't know. Well, the problem with that that style of thinking is it because it's delusional. And now we all have a touch of delusionalism. Trust me, I've got, I've got everyone has what it has. But the problem with that kind of stuff is what they view in regards to going on a Letterman and being on TV and all that kind of stuff are reinforces to them that they're on to something, right. and they're not on to anything. But they think it's the universe is letting them know, you know, that this. Yeah, is they're getting. Pavlovian, it's Pavlovian, yeah. and they're getting positive reinforcement by yeah. getting so on we, these programs. And and so it causes that sunken cost fallacy where you're investing time in something that you shouldn't be investing in. Also, the uh, 
uh, second cost fallacy and there's another one there too the cascade effect where you're now going out more you know it's like people online i think this is for a lot of the channels that are we kind of combat against which is they went online and they still got a lot of viewers and subscribers so they felt that they were onto something and they were probably sincere about the whole thing i don't think they're all deceptors out there or whatever like that but the problem with that is and then after the rationale doesn't click in so if all of us were sitting there you know like steve and you, you get a little white pad over here that's down to the floor with all these questions you want to ask this guy and he's not striking anything off your list of rational just right. obvious questions you'd ask like the one caller who phones in if you spoke sasquatch what did you say now that's important the, then you're gonna want to want to know what is the first word you want to say to a sasquatch if a guy's yeah. claiming that yeah you're gonna say uh well where'd you get your jeans from uh, yeah. how do you travel or are you gonna say what the fuck are you? You know, if you can talk to a Sasquatch, like, yeah. what are you? Next question, where are you from? <laughs> you know, those are going to be obvious, just automatic answers out of your mouth of if you ran into a Sasquatch that for some reason you thought could talk to you, uh, you're going to ask these questions. But he never did answer that question, I don't think, did he? In that interview? I think he went on to this idea yeah. of what you won't understand and all this kind of stuff. But that kind of, again, that deflection is what that is. Yeah, right? they they had a philosophical conversation. Well, we're real, but we're not real at the same time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the fallacies about philosophical discussion. It seems rational, but it doesn't mean it's validly correct right. with the right. evidence. You know, a lot of philosophers came up with great ideas, but none, a lot of them weren't solid enough. You know, and right. so they adjusted themselves, and that's what people should be doing. So. Yeah. Now Mick made a comment. Uh, it was obvious whenever I got upset. I didn't really get upset with him. Actually, I was laughing a lot. Um, you know, like the, the poop everywhere, weird, weird, weird. Some of the things he was saying were pretty funny. What I was doing was when he started getting out of control and starting to dominate the show, that's when my voice changed a little bit. And I went to the phones or I did announce up. Oh, I got to get this out here. You know, uh, call us at blah, 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 blah. Because yeah. I want it. He was getting too rhythmic into doing things. So what I wanted to do was break his rhythm. Yeah, well, the thing, too, is the, the interesting thing, too, was I was talking about open systems and closed systems. Open systems are about spontaneity, creativity, and vitality. You guys laugh all the time when you're on your show, right? Yeah. Every time you're joking with him on that interview, because that's one of your defenses, one of your ways of trying to get back control is you use humor, right? Yeah, yeah. He never once laughed. He last laughed one time that I can that I recall because I was waiting for him. I said, this guy doesn't laugh, so he's a closed system, rigidity, control, and power. Yeah, the only time, back. and the, the only, only time he, he laughed was when it brought it back to him. Right, it, right. Yeah, he, he made a joke or something, him. and he went like, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you heard that. And, and he also would say a statement uh, acting like he was writing your joke, but he wasn't. He was just writing his ego, right. which was making him laugh. So it looked like he was laughing to the people that might be watching or, or hearing that conversation. Like uh, the guy just reeked of, I mean, again, if they're not showing you the center part of any, I don't care what video channel you're interested in, Sasquatch or anything, like that, if they're not showing you the middle part of all the claims, they're bullshitters. And this guy's a classic case of narcissistic, self-absorbed bullshitter. And uh, he never showed any of it. And, and then there, he's demanding that we listen to his idea without any evidence at all. And well, he, uh, he let me answer that question for finally track why was, who was that guy? Anyhow, being new here, I never heard of the guy before. But, um, well, if you're familiar with uh, Dr. Matt Johnson or... Um, it's his brother. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, or uh, James Laps Lapsaritis. Um, yeah, he was that person that day. Um, just figure like, uh, you know, he was like the head of this big woo contingent. He was the guy people yeah. represented the woo uh, or the, you know, the paranormal think, big yeah. He's the godfather of woo, I believe. I think that's what it is. Honestly, when I kept seeing it, I think if he had that much influence and think of how people are so influenced today online. This is right. when the TV and stuff was on. And yeah, he was never on Facebook. You know, yeah, he never. Yeah. never and so, uh, I mean, you're on David Letterman. Remember Dave, those years on David yeah. Letterman? That was pretty. I had friends who I went to the David Letterman show. You know, I got to be in the audience. And it was a big thing. <laughs> and, co and Coast to Coast, which was really the only yeah, national yeah. program. Yeah. I mean, he went on these things that predated like uh, any of the paranormal or Bigfoot programming that existed on TV shows today. It was pre Monster Quest. It was. Um, you know, he was getting all this attention. 
Yeah. Um, well, and very, know, few, and very few other people were. Yeah, and he's using all the phraseology that people use to keep your mind open, but it keeps your mind open that your brain falls out of your ears. And that's like, is it possible? Don't you think everything is possible? Don't you believe, Steve? Don't you think? Don't you and, think? You know? And and the the caveat there is is that he's trying to get everybody to keep an open mind, but he, yet he has a closed yeah. mind to anything that reduces control and power. I would right. clamp it for the lock of it <laughs> and the safety device in the front for yeah, my he, power. He's head. got his theories and opinions set in concrete, buddy. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. If you come along with your theory or your opinion, your yours is set in jello. And he yeah. just kind of just wiggles it away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but his are, are just concrete. But based on what? Yeah. Based oh. on Zip. nothing. Nothing. Zip. Just his, But uh, I, I will I will say this. Um mm. The Hunt for the Skinwalker is a great book. Sure. Uh <laughs> really good book. Very very interesting. Totally agree. When what um, he was talking about the books from the seventies about Bigfoot, he's totally correct. Those were all just the classic tales of, you know, right. Ape Canyon and stuff like that, you know. And, you know, this, this is at a time where he obviously he didn't read Bender Nagel. Uh, I don't believe uh, Meldrum's book was out yet. Um, you know, or, you know, Kathy Strain's book. I mean, there's so much uh, that yeah. came out during that time period. 2006, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's true. Had he been on Facebook... He probably actually wouldn't have lasted long on Facebook. He probably would have, his account would have been probably banned because he had this terrible habit of creating accounts and sock accounts. He was like one of the first people that, you know, I ever heard created what they call a sock account where he would create all these accounts and go on forums after he got booted off him the first time for being obnoxious, you know, and, and you know what, you know, God rest his soul, but he was an obnoxious twat. And, uh, and that's uh, as they were my English friends would say. Um, and uh, he would get booted off and then, come, you know, find a way back using a sock. And that's why, you know, back in the Bigfoot forum days, they had to create this method of checking IP addresses, you know, cross referencing them with other accounts when yep. you created a Bigfoot forums account. So uh, definitely. Um, um, anyway. So, people, uh, just so you know, what you're looking at is the Bigfoot picture. And now the circle in this one, the red circle, is not the Bigfoot wearing blue jeans and human clothes. That's supposed to be Bextured. And the Bigfoot is in the rectangle, which... Oh, oh right there. I, I don't see anything. I, I see a blob squatch. But, like uh, there's a black bear kind of coming over to the top of the front of the vehicle with his paw out ready to lamp down onto the front windshield. Onto the tarp, yeah. Or is that a, it might be a buffalo. Maybe it's a buffalo. Maybe a buffalo or some hooved animal. <laughs> Are you talking right near the windshield? Is that what he's Yeah, yeah, where, where the square where the square is. So oh there's God. a big foot in that picture, supposedly. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, and what's it supposed to be doing? What's he say? It's uh, is it sitting on top of his truck, maybe? <laughs> He's through the sunroof. Look at there he is. He's waving to his <laughs> hey, everybody on the floor. Good show night, Steve. <laughs> so but anyway, <laughs> Leon, that, thanks for popping on and giving your two cents. Hang out when we while we do the outro. Sure. But um, but guys, uh, we're out of time and it's been a fun, quick episode. Oh, I Two hours went by like yes. that tonight. I love so this. anyway, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh folks, we'll be back next week for episode 102. And uh I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Chris, do your thing. Yeah, I uh, appreciate everybody coming in and, and joining us in the chat. All our listeners, we really appreciate you. You guys make the show. Uh, if this is the first time watching us on YouTube, please make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button. Uh, give us a thumbs up. You know, that, that helps. And the sharing. Sharing is caring. That's uh, right. Sharing is caring. And Leon, thanks again. Thanks, Leon, for popping on, folks. Thanks, Leon. Yes, sir. We love our audience. Our audience has the, you know, the smarts and the think outside the box. And it, it was nice to take them back to a time before they became our audience. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there's some folks out there that have been following me since a long time. But uh, for the folks that hadn't, this was just one of those early, early gems that we did. And uh, 
you know, I'm glad to share that with everybody. And, um, you know, I hope I'm a little bit better now um, than I was back then. Uh, you know, people wondered why, I would, you know, back then that systems were so complicated, you know, watching the phones, watching the switchboard, watching the chat, you know, they, you didn't have what we have today. So anyway. I also want to thank Eric Beckchard. Uh, rest in peace, my friend. Yep. <laughs> rest in peace. You know, like I said, he never did me wrong, uh, but, you know, it was some lively, you know, having to deal with. And I'm, I'm good at dealing with personalities. You know how many criminals out there I've dealt with that have the same exact personality. So, so anyway, folks, on behalf of everybody here, have a happy and safe week. God bless. And we'll catch everybody next week, 9 p.m. Eastern on SquatchDTV.com. We'll catch you all next week. Hey, folks, you've been watching Squatch DTV. Join us each week, Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for the latest on the Bigfoot mystery. As always, we thank you for being our loyal viewers and encourage all to subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Steve Culls. As always, have a great week. Stay safe. God bless and keep on squatching.